Welcome to Biology Made Easy. Now, what do we have for today? In today's lesson, we will continue our study of classification. We will look at the three domains of life as proposed by Carl Wolsey. And then also we will look at five kingdoms, list the five kingdoms of organism, and then discuss the prototest kingdom. We are going to look at the three domains of life. But before we do that, let's talk about the two main organisms in life. Organisms have been put into two main groups, prokaryotes, you remember, and eukaryotes. Now, prokaryotes are what organisms? Bacteria and cyanobacteria. They are organisms that have cells, the cells, have DNA, but the DNA is not enclosed in a nucleus, so there's no nucleus. And there's no double membrane bound structure, all right? Organelles, but they are ribosomes. Then we have eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are organisms, they also have DNA enclosed in nucleus and have double membrane bound structures, so they have organelles. And eukaryotes include fungi, plant, animals. All right, we are now going to look at the three domains of life, how that came about. Carl Wolsey, in 1978, realized that bacteria can be subdivided into two. He found an ancient bacteria called AKI. And this ancient bacteria, he realized that the biochemistry of this ancient bacteria is different from the real bacteria known as U bacteria. So Carl Wolse divided bacteria into archaea and U bacteria. And because he did that, he then said that then organisms are not just prokaryotes and eukaryotes, but organisms are archaea, bacteria, U bacteria, and eukaryotes. You see, our eukaryotes are there, but he subdivided bacteria, which is prokaryotes, into two, AKI and eubacteria. So he divides the three domains of life instead of the two. So the three domains of life, which Kawase divides, is what you have. AKI bacteria, eubacteria, and the eukaryotes he called eukarya. So neat three domains of life. All organisms have been put into five kingdoms. The five kingdoms of organisms that have been proposed by Whitaker. That is the system of classification that is being used now. And that is what you have. Prokaryotes, prototists, or protista, fungus, plants, animal. That is the five kingdom scheme, all right? But then, because Carl Wolsey devised the three domains of life and Carl Wolsey subdivided bacteria into archaea and U bacteria, Wolsey has six kingdoms of organism scheme, all right? And his six kingdom of organism scheme is archaea bacteria, U bacteria, prototist or protista, fungus, plant, and animal. Right. So these are the five kingdoms of organisms by Whitaker that we are going to use is the prokaryotes, prototist, protista or protista, fungus, plant, and animal. And remember, we have already discussed prokaryotes, which is bacteria. Now we are going to look at the rest, the rest which are eukaryotes. We have already discussed prokaryotes. We are now going to look at eukaryotes. And under eukaryotes, we are using the Whitaker 5 scheme. 
So we are going to look at prototest, fungi, plants, and animals. So today, we want to look at the prototest. All right? Good. Or protesta kingdom. What are the organisms that have been put into the prototest kingdom? All the organisms in that kingdom are eukaryotes. They are all unicellular. And there are two types of organisms in this group. The two types, one type of organism have plant-like characteristics. And the other type has animal-like characteristics. Remember, all the organisms in the prototis kingdom are unicellular. They are eukaryotes by unicellular. The plant-like ones are also known as unicellular plants or protophyta. Then the animal-like types are also known as unicellular animals and also known as protozoa. So in this prototest kingdom, we will first of all look at the plant-like prototest. They are unicellular plants. All right? Their characteristics is only that they have chlorophyll to photosynthesize. And because they have chlorophyll to photosynthesize, the biochemistry, all right, of these unicellular organisms, the biochemistry is just like the plants they photosynthesize. Only that they are unicellular. They don't have cell walls, all right? Only chlorophyll. Example is Chlamydominus, Chlorella, Volvox, and Gonium. As you can see, Chlamydominus, very nice with flagella, the Chlorella, the Volvox and the Gonium are colonial. Volvox, colony of Chlamydominus. And you also see gonium, right? These are prototypes and plant-like or unicellular plants. So they are protophyta. Very neat. Now we want to now look at the animal-like or the protozoans. The protozoans, that is the unicellular animals, their characteristics is they ingest food. They just take food in like animals do and digest the food the way animals like amoeba feeds. Examples are amoeba, paramecium, trypanosoma, plasmodium. We put into brackets here euglena. So let us look at these protozoans. You see the amoeba? It moves by pseudopodia, all right? And it also takes in food with the help of the pseudopodia. Paramecium, paramecium, see, it's all over with cilia, which it uses for locomotion. And then it has an oral groove there that it's used for feeding. Trypanosoma, which is in the group phylum Zoomastigani, the trypanosoma have at least one flagellum for locomotion, and it's found in the blood of human beings, parasites, and its vector is cheche fly. This cheche fly is the one that transmits trypanosoma found in the blood of man. Trypanosoma causes sleeping sickness in man. Now, you know what a vector is? The cheche fly is a vector, all right, of trypanosoma. You know what a vector is? Well, think about it. We'll talk about it soon. But let's look at plasmodium. It's also in the phylum epicomplexa. Plasmodium has no locomotory structures. All right, it moves by wriggling and it's also carried by body fluids. 
it lives in the blood of man it also lives in the liver and spends part of its life cycle in human beings and part of its life cycle in the mosquito the mosquito is the vector and then this plasmodium spends part of its life cycle in human beings the hum its sexual state sexual phase is spent in the human being and its asexual phase is spent in the mosquito so we'll find out what the sexual phase is and what the asexual phase of the parasite what is it but we'll have a, a good time to look at diseases as a topic but for the time being we'll define it before we end class today what about euglena? Euglena, it has both animal-like and plant-like features. It's animal-like features. It has a flagellum, so it moves, locomotes. And it has gullet to take in food, feeding. That's its animal-like features. And its plant-like features is it has chloroplast. It has chlorophyll. You see the green bits. So that is euglena. It photosynthesizes as when it's good time, sunlight, everything is fine, it photosynthesizes. When there's no sun and it's winter, then it will be taken in food by using its oral groove. It takes in food, it feeds on other microscopic organisms using its gullet. So very, very neat adapting to winter and when it's dark for a long time and also when it's sunlight, photosynthesis. These are the few protozoans. Now we mentioned vector. What is a vector? It's an organism that transmits a disease from one organism to another. The mosquito is a vector. Then what is sexual phase of a parasite? and an asexual phase of a parasite. So you see the plasmodium is a parasite. Its sexual phase is in the primary host, that is the man. That is where the reproduction stage is sexual. And when it's doing asexual reproduction, it does that in the secondary host, which is the mosquito. So that's plasmodium. It has a sexual phase in the primary host, which is a man, and it has an asexual phase, what it does, asexual reproduction, it does it in the secondary host, which is the mosquito. Plasmodium, that is how it lives. So as we talked about these organisms, look at the organisms we talked about, amoeba, Paramecium, Trypanosoma, Plasmodium, Glina also comes in. All these organisms, as we were talking about them, did you notice that we were looking at the adaptive features or adaptations? All the organisms we'll be talking about in our biology class, as we talked about the organism, look at its adaptations. The adaptations are features that the organism possess that enables the organism to live successfully in the habitat. That's adaptation. So with the organisms that we have mentioned so far, if you look at amoeba, can you talk about its adaptive features? The pseudopodia that it uses for locomotion. So you see, adaptation talks about a structure and the function. This structure is there not for nothing, but for doing something. So that is adaptation. So the podia for locomotion and for feeding. Paramecium, what are these adaptive features? Cilia for locomotion, oral groove and gullet for feeding, trypanosoma, flagellum for locomotion. Then you come to talk about if the epicomplexa doesn't seem to have anything but it does it's able to um, wriggle about okay and it has others then we are talking about euglena it has a lot of adaptations all right look at its um, chloroplast to photosynthesize the gullet for feeding flagellum for locomotion they are all adaptive features structure and function 
Now, beside this specific adaptation, are there any adaptations that all of them show flattened bodies? You see, they are unicellular, they are very flat. All of them are flattened bodies. So they have a large surface area to volume ratio. And when organisms are like that, substances diffuse in and out very easily. And then also, they are light in weight to float when they are flattened, large surface area to volume ratio. They all have contractile vacuoles. Let me quickly explain contractile vacuoles when we're looking at cells. So this is a cell. Let's say this is a unicellular organism, all right? And it has vacuoles. And this one, it has the nucleus. Let's not forget our nucleus in here. And this vacuole, we call it contractile vacuole. What it does is when water moves into the cell, the excess water moves into the contractile vacuole. The contractile vacuole swells, it becomes big, and as it gets so full, it moves to the surface of the cell and then bursts to release the excess water. So contractile vacuoles, they regulate the concentration of salts in the cytoplasm. And all these protozoans, they all have contractile vacuoles that does osmoregulation, removing excess water to make sure that the salt concentration of the cytoplasm is always constant. Very neat. There's something peculiar about all these protozoans. You know, very quickly, if you look at amoeba, it has a cell membrane here, it has cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm is two types of, all right? You have this cytoplasm is quite jelly, and this is fluid, watery. This one is called plasma gel, and this one is called plasma sol. It is in the plasma sol that you have nucleus and others, etc. And all the protozoans, they have the same kind. It's more elaborate in um, amoeba, where the cytoplasm moves to form the pseudopodia. So you have amoeba, a cytoplasm just moves to form pseudopodia. It's the cytoplasm that is moving. The plasma gel becomes plasma salt, then it moves. All of them have, all right, plasma gel, plasma salt, ectoplasm, endoplasm. All that will be looked at in a good time. Well, we have had enough for the day. We want to give ourselves homework. The homework, draw amoeba and illustrate how it feeds. Question two is state the importance of prototists. Here we have an amoeba. So the podia are here. This amoeba sees, senses there's food here. How amoeba senses there's food by the chemicals that reach it. Therefore, after sensing there's food, it moves changes directions of the pseudopodia towards the food. So this pseudopodia will be redrawn from here and formed towards the food. Now the food is surrounded by the pseudopodia. Now the food is almost being engulfed into the amoeba. Now what happens is that a food vacuole is formed. The food goes into the amoeba as a food vacuole. It means that when these two pseudopodia closes up around the food, it closes water and a little bit of its membrane to form a food vacuole. So the food vacuole is now inside the amoeba. Now enzymes, which I have indicated with red signs, enzymes are released 
from the cytoplasm into the food vacuole and the food is digested inside the food vacuole now when the food is digested will move into the cytoplasm and the rest of undigested material in the food vacuole will move to the surface of the cell and the cell will burst a small area will, will open up and then the, the undigested food substances released into the surrounding so this is the process by which amoeba takes in food feeds and this process is known as phagocytosis the reason why we are giving this assignment is that the way amoeba feeds is very important it shows itself up in so many places how some substances get into cells how white blood cells take in bacteria and foreign matter is the same process of feeding that amoeba does that is why now that we've talked about protozoans we want to find out how amoeba does its feeding before we talk about the importance of protetists let's define a term plankton. Plankton are tiny organisms, many microscopic ones that drift in surface water or float in the sea or fresh water. Examples are diatoms, prototis, crustaceans, etc. Importance of plant-like prototists, protophyta. They are phytoplankton, autotrophic, so they make food and they serve as the food chain where many other organisms, especially zooplankton, feed. Then too, they can also serve as food for man, e.g. chlorella tablets. Then the importance of protozoans. One, the, the beneficial aspects. They feed on phytoplankton and they also serve as food for other organisms. So they are part of the food chain. Two, their bodies serve as habitat for other organisms. Three, some of them live in mutualistic association with other organisms. E.g., the protozoan trichonympha lives in the gut of termites and digests cellulose in the food of termites for the termites. Well, harmful effects, there are a lot of diseases caused by protozoans. Malaria is caused by the protozoan pl plasmodium. Sleeping sickness is caused by the protozoan trypanosoma. Dysentery is caused by a kind of amoeba called enter amoeba histolica. And so many other diseases. Gaidia lambilea causes gaidiatis, diarrhea, etc. They cause a lot of diseases. So till we meet in our next lesson to look at the fungi kingdom. Have a good day. Bye-bye and thank you.